We are just a couple of days away from Christmas, and in this episode, I will give gifts and presents to a few of the top prospects. So find out what I would give each prospect as we head into 2023. Stay tuned. Big, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. And this episode is brought to you by BetOnline because BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline is where the game starts. I am your host for the day, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. And as I mentioned at the top of the episode, we are just two days away from Christmas, and I want to give out Christmas gifts. Now, for me, this Christmas is going to be a little bit disappointing. I just found out that I have COVID, and I passed the symptoms on to my son. Honestly, I would have never known I had it. I just felt like I had a cold, but my son had a fever. It wasn't anything too major, but he, my wife noticed that he did have a fever. He was running hot, and it didn't go away in 24 hours so we took him to the doctor and found out that he had COVID and then I I figured that if he has it then then I must have it and I probably gave it to him because I came back from Africa I was traveling on the plane and so on my wife doesn't have it but we're we're doing okay Um, my symptoms are just feels like I have the common cold only thing that I will say that is a little bit different is the last three or four days when I sneeze, the pain feels like it's a pain I've never felt before from a sneeze. I just chalked it up to maybe I was getting old. And then I have been, um, I guess, having like some some uh, cramps or charley horses randomly. And the first one was I was on the plane and luckily I was in a in a aisle seat. I, I had a cramp in like my stomach and my hamstring at the same time, and boy, it was embarrassing. Luckily, everybody was asleep, and uh, I just was trying to stretch out one way. My legs, that was it was bad. It was bad. And so, other than that, man, I, I feel fine. I don't feel like I, I have any any major any major symptoms, but I'll be okay. Just a little disappointed. We had plans to go to the Dallas Mavericks uh, versus Lakers game on Christmas Day, and uh, you know family pictures, all that stuff that we won't be able to do. So it kind of it kind of stinks that my little man, his first Christmas is not going to, you know, be be great, but he's too young to, to, to remember it. So I'm just thankful that the symptoms aren't bad and everybody's okay. All right, in this episode, I just want to talk about a few gifts that I would give if I were Santa Claus. I guess I'll play Rafa Claus in this, in this episode. And we'll, we'll start at the top with, with Victor Wimayama. If I could give Victor any gift for Christmas, I'd probably give him two things. I'd say a little bit of bulk and strength, which I think is going to come later on. And then I'd give him a better point guard that can create open looks for him. And it's it's a situation where he's playing great. He's having like 22 points per game. He is doing extremely well. But he's had to create a lot of his own shots. He has a smaller point guard that isn't able to give him the ball when he's being trapped. He hasn't really been able to take advantage of his athleticism as a vertical lob threat. And with a little bit of added strength, I think he'd even be better in the post. Right now he's only shooting 39% on post-ups. So I think with strength and someone that can get him better entry feeds and easier looks, I think Wimbenyama could be even more spectacular. I mean, he's the best player in the French league. And you may say it's between him and Mike James, but he is obviously a a generational talent. And if I could give him two things, it would be a point guard that can create some open looks for him and get him some bulk and some strength because he has all the tools to be a a really good post player, footwork, touch, all of that. It's just, he doesn't have the strength to, to establish really good low post position. All right. Scoot Henderson. If I could gift Scoot, with a if I could gift Scoot health for Christmas that would be priority number one he's you know he had the you know the knee injury that he suffered in the in the scrimmage against uh the Metropolitans 92 
Then he's had like a, I guess like a concussion. He's missed some time. So I would give him uh, health <laughs> and just being able to get on the court. Because when he's played, he's been really, really good. He's shot the ball well. He's done everything that you would expect for him as far as improving coming into the season. If there was a little bit of concern, and it's not major. I mean, he's shooting 47% from three, which is really good. The free throw percentage, 70% from the foul line. I would like to see that improve a little bit. The six assists is good. 48% overall. I mean, the efficiency has been great. But if there's one area where he hasn't been really efficient at, it is finishing at the rim. He's only shooting 54% at the rim, which with his athleticism and physical tools and and I, I would like to see that get a little higher. So if I could give Scoot a gift for Christmas, it would be health. And I'd um, you know make sure that he is getting is a better finisher at the basket. All right, number three, Amon Thompson. Now, if I'm Santa Claus, and this is something I probably would have said to you six months ago or three weeks ago, it's just the same old story. I, I'd give him a jump shot. He's only shooting 30.8% on jump shots. And as a point guard, I think that it, it's better to be a, I guess, poor shooter when you have the ball in your hands than being an off-the-ball guy. But teams are just going to go under on the pick and rolls. So I would definitely gift him a jump shot because he's a jump shot away from from being spectacular. And then you see the jump that Scoot made in his shooting. And then you see that Amin hasn't really made strides as a shooter. It's a no-brainer that I would give him a, a jump shot because I think, you know, with his athleticism and his passing and all of that, if he can make teams pay – for going under the pick and roll, then that just opens the, you know, everything up for him and his teammates. So that's a pretty obvious one there. Nick Smith Jr. If I could give him anything for Christmas, it would definitely be health. I, you know, he missed, I think maybe five of the team's first six games with it was labeled as right knee management, and then now it looks like he's out again with the same issue. So. Health is the, the big thing there for, for Nick Smith. And right now, I mean, it's it's kind of early. I haven't really heard much about how it is going to impact his draft status. But it's a situation where I definitely see teams are going to be doing their homework on this need to make sure that it's not a, a long-term issue. And it, it, Arkansas has been pretty vague about it. Like right knee management you don't really know what it is. It's a sore knee. Is it from like a previous injury? So it's going to be interesting around draft time because um, his agent probably doesn't want teams picking and prodding at his knee and, and just looking for something or looking for a reason not to draft him. And so his the, the medical records surrounding Nick Smith around draft day are going to be really, really, really interesting. All right, another player that if I were to hand out gifts for Christmas – I'd give Brandon Miller a better layup and finishing package around the rim. He's been dynamite shooting. I mean, over like 44% from three, something like that. 19 points, eight rebounds. He did bounce back from a couple games where if you weren't like a big Brandon Miller guy, you could look at the Houston game and the North Carolina game and, and say, oh, well, this is, you know, a situation where, he didn't look good against these teams, but then he bounced back against Gonzaga and had a, a monster game. But he's struggling finishing at the rim. Only 43% at the rim. And at the rim is basically everything. But in the half court, he's only shooting 36% on layups. That is a little bit concerning. I mean, he's too gifted, too athletic, too skilled to be shooting so inefficient around the rim. So I would definitely give him... A better layup package. Three. All right. When we return, I'll continue to hand out Christmas gifts for the 2023 NBA draft class. Now, if you're not familiar with Masterclass, it is a class that offers you classes on a wide variety of topics, and they're all taught by world class instructors who are at the top of their fields. Each class is broken into individual video lessons, usually around 10 minutes long, and members can explore at their own pace. And each class is supported by downloadable materials class guides, recipes, and more. A masterclass is accessible on your phone, your web, your smart TV, and it is available via audio mode to listen to classes on the go. And you can find the classes at masterclass.com. There are over 2,500 video lessons 
from 180 of today's most brilliant minds, and they are available anytime, anywhere on iOS, Android, desktop, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. And the annual membership starts at just $15 a month. And there are a wide variety of topics. You can learn to write anything from a book or screenplay to just a letter. Learn how to communicate with your boss or your family or how to make a dinner worthy of a Michelin star or just how to make really good scrambled eggs. Whatever you're interested in, there's a class for you. Over 180 exclusive classes taught by the instructors that you know and love. And here are some of the instructors that I like to highlight. Chris Voss on the art of negotiation. John Legend teaches songwriting. John Douglas on how to think like an FBI profiler. Chris Jenner teaches the power of personal branding. And Mariah Carey teaches using the voice as an instrument. So many more. Like Gordon Ramsay, he can teach you how to cook. Again, 2,500 classes, 180 instructors. And there's video content. And it's on your streaming platform. So check it out at masterclass.com. Once again, this is Rafael Barlow reporting to you live from Dallas, Texas, where it is freezing cold. And I, I, I'm disappointed, man. I'm from Nebraska. I moved to Texas to avoid the winters. I, I do think that living up north where the weather is cold in the winter time is optional. And I chose the option to move down south. And now winter has followed me. And if you live in Texas, you know about... 2021 where we had the snow and there was like no power for like a week and luckily it's not that bad so I don't want to complain too much but some people are having flashbacks and I did see that some people were having power outages so it's like turn off your Christmas lights because we need to conserve energy all right I'm back to giving out gifts I talked about Brandon Miller last now let's talk about Asor Thompson who's Amin's brother the same thing jump shots Asura was off to, at one point, a good start shooting from three. He has since dropped about 33% from three. He was like 43% at one point. Overall, he's shooting 50, about 52% from the floor. The free throw shooting is about 63%, but he's only shooting 26% on jump shots overall. That is something that I would give him, and it's the same old story. I mean, we've been talking about this for over a year now. I, I do think it, it's a bit concerning now, hold on, before I say this, I know not everybody progresses at the same rate, but I do think it's a bit concerning that this was the biggest weakness or area for improvement in the Thompson Twins game, and we have not seen much improvement over the last year. So a jump shot would be the greatest gift that I could give them. The next player I want to talk about is Cam Whitmore. Cam came into this season as a guy that many thought could challenge to be the third pick in the draft. A lot of people thought he was going to be the best college prospect in college basketball. And so far, the, the results have been they've been a little mixed. He's only played five games coming back from the hand injury. He's playing a little less than 22 minutes per game, but he's averaging 12.6 rebounds. The biggest concern for me is the outside shooting. And I thought that he shot really, really well at the under-18s this summer. I was not 100% convinced that he would be able to keep up that type of hot shooting. And so far, he's only shooting 25% from three. And I think that that's an area that could, could definitely improve. What's interesting to me is he's taking just a little less than 10 shots per game in 21 minutes. But 50% of his field goal attempts are threes. That is something that I was not expecting. I mean, he's had games where he took seven threes, six threes, and the percentage has definitely gone down simply because in his last two games, he has missed all seven of his attempts from three. So the three-point shooting is would, would definitely be the, the easiest gift for, for me to give and – you know, I've been giving out a lot of jump shots so far for Christmas. So if you are a shooting coach, um, <laughs> I, I, I've probably worked you like crazy because I'm, I'm giving away a lot of jump shots so far for Christmas. But I, I do expect Cam's numbers to to go up as his minutes continue to rise. But again, I, I do find it interesting that half of his field goal attempts are, are three pointers. I would love to see him attack the basket a little bit more, post up, and just kind of 
he's not I think he's in a sense kind of he's too athletic, too strong, too gifted around the rim to to kind of bail the defense out by selling for a, a lot of jumpers when the three point shot is I wouldn't say that is his greatest asset and I feel like if you're shooting three point shooting is your greatest asset if that's your greatest strength that you bring to the table then it's okay for you to shoot 50% of or it's okay for 50% of your field goal attempts to be from three but if that's not your greatest asset I do think that you can you know you're you're settling or you're you're bailing the defense out all right next Kaysen Wallace now Kaysen you know it's it's He's so good at so many different things. It gets to the point where you're kind of nitpicking. He is shooting 50% from the floor, 50% from three. So you're wondering, and, and that doesn't even include the fact that he's playing great defense. So you're wondering, what do you give someone that seems to have it all? And in Kaysen's case, I didn't plan on saying that. In Kaysen's case, free throw shooting. This is pretty alarming. Kaysen Wallace is only shooting 54% from the free throw line. He's too good of a shooter to shoot 54% from the free throw line. Now, he's only getting to the foul line two times per game. But I do think it's interesting. And, again, it's not a whole lot of attempts, but he had a game against Michigan State where he's two for four and a game against Florida A&M where he was two for five. And it just, you know, by not being a lot of attempts, games where he misses two or three free throws kind of brings the average down. So I would just give him an improved free throw percentage if I were giving out gifts all right Keontae George Keontae George a Dallas area native like Casey Wallace and Keontae has in my opinion even though he hasn't been efficient I think he's done a, a fairly decent job of kind of changing the narrative around his game and though coming into the season there were some scouts that felt like he was a, a shoot first guy a guy that looked to generate his own offense before getting others involved and just kind of like a a basically a score that looks to score and score only i think so far he's shown that he's a capable passer he's averaging a little less than four assists per game and he can make some good reads and he's not a guy that's that's looking to get up a, a bunch of shots well you knew going to baylor he wasn't going to have a, a bunch of freedom to to shoot 15 20 shots per game however the shooting has not been great for for him so far he's only shooting 30 percent on jump shots he's been really good as far as shooting unguarded catch and shoot on unguarded catch and shoot opportunities he's shooting 47 percent pretty much lights out but when he's contested he's only shooting 24 percent and obviously it's a lot more contested than unguarded shots but I would bring him a gift of efficiency from shooting on a jump shot. Because to me, the jump shot is his bread and butter. And even though he's scoring, the jump shot just hasn't been there. And if it does start to fall, then then Baylor could be really, really dangerous. All right, another player that is a freshman that is expected to be one of the first names called on draft day is Jairus Walker. Now, Walker's playing for a loaded Houston team that has plenty of talent that has put him in a position where he's playing a role that is probably similar to the role that he will play early in his career as a rookie, as like this this role player that does a little bit of everything. But what's a little bit concerning about Jairus Walker and what I would give him is better efficiency around the rim. He's only shooting 48% on layups. And then his overall touch around the basket hasn't been the, the best, in my opinion. And that's including just contested layups, soft touch finishes, floaters, and so on. So I would gift, gift him a better layup package and more efficiency finishing around the basket. All right, last in this segment, Grady Dick. Now, Grady Dick has been phenomenal. You can make a case and say Grady Dick has been the best freshman in college basketball. He's definitely up there with, you know, you can say Casey Wallace or you can mention, uh, obviously, Brandon Miller. And Dick has been, he's been really good. I mean, he's been efficient. And before last night's game where he kind of struggled, I think he was like 3 for 11, he was around like 50% from the floor, 50% from three. Overall, shooting 48% from the floor, 48% from three, a little under 80% from the foul line, average of 15.5 rebounds per game. 
I mean, he's been really, really good. So, I can't say I need to give him a better jump shot. I can't say I need to, you know, make sure that he or give give him a gift of a, a better finishing package around the rim because he's been pretty good finishing there. So, this is just kind of outside the box. If I could give Grady Dick anything for Christmas, I'd give him a little bit more offensive creativity off the dribble, a little bit more of an isolation game, some posts, some just a bag. Even though that may not necessarily be a role that he'll play in the NBA, I think he has a defined role as a floor spacer. But I think it would be fun to watch if he just had a little bit more creativity off the bounce. And if I give him anything for Christmas, that's what I would give Grady Dick, a little bit more swagger and creativity off the dribble. All right, when we return, I'll round out this Christmas gift or this list of gifts that I get for Christmas. But I want to talk to you about BetOnline.net because it is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball. Everything is at BetOnline.net. And if you like part... <clears throat> And if you like sports podcasts, you can even find those on BetOnline as well. It is the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. So head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. All right, once again, you are listening to the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. Now for your next listen, check out... The Locked On Sports Today podcast, from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, it is available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. All right, rounding out this last segment, I'll continue to hand out Christmas gifts. Anthony Black, similar to Grady Dick, I would say you can't really look at a particular statistic and say that black is struggling in in this area i would just like to see him have a little bit more offensive creativity or be a little bit more efficient as a pick and roll ball handler now i know the pick and roll ball handler stats in college basketball are totally different than in the nba the nba runs a lot more pick and rolls for their ball handlers the spacing is a little bit different and so on but i would like to see anthony black as a better pick and roll ball handler score. And I think that that's something that we probably won't see at the college level, but in the NBA, I think it would be a very good asset to have in this, in this arsenal. All right. The next player that I would like to give a gift for Christmas is Derek Whitehead. And this is simple health. Just want him to return to form and just show what made him such a highly touted guy? He's someone that people have been comparing to Benedict Matherin, and that's a very, really good comparison considering how, how well Matherin has played. But Whitehead has shown flashes of what made him, again, so highly touted. But, again, it, it, he just, on for the most part, he hasn't looked healthy. I know Duke is bringing him along slowly. And right after he had his best game against Maryland Eastern Shore, he missed the next game against Wake Forest with a, I guess they say it was a non-COVID related illness. So hopefully he can get back to form. If he can just show the explosiveness and just the shot making and the passing that he displayed on the prep level, then I think his draft stock will be fine. But again, I'm giving him health. Now, as far as his teammates, I, I'll go to now a couple of his teammates. Kyle Filipowski, he has been Duke's best freshman, arguably, some may say Mark Mitchell, but I would give him a a jump shot for Christmas. He's only shooting 27% on catch-and-shoot jumpers overall. If he can prove to be a much better floor spacer, I think that it will help out his draft stock. But overall, he's played really, really well. He He's shown why he was a, a guy that people were really high on. Even though he was not the freshman that most people would have expected to be Duke's best freshman, because I think it was... Obviously, Whitehead and, and then Lively, but Filipowski has been their most consistent, and a lot of it is due to health. Now, as far as Lively, minutes. <laughs> that was that would be my gift for him, minutes. Now, on one hand, I feel like 
you have to earn minutes. You can't just be given minutes because of, you know, your your prep ranking or how high you are ranked coming into your freshman season. The problem with with Lively, in a sense, is that I just don't think Duke's freshman class, I, I don't think the pieces all fit together. There's some overlapping skill sets. And for him, he seems to be the odd man out. He's only played 20 minutes per game. He's only played more than 20 minutes or 20 minutes or more in only four games. He's only had one game in double figures. And unless there's an injury or just complete rotation change, I don't see how much can change. You'd have to wonder, like, if he chose to go to a different situation, how much would he be valued even more? How much would his draft stock be improved? And so on. And it just seems like going to Duke wasn't the best fit for him. All right. Dylan Mitchell. Dylan Mitchell is a guy that it's pretty obvious. If you've been following college basketball, you know about Dylan Mitchell. You know, the jump shot is the biggest concern. And not necessarily can he shoot. It's just does he shoot it? Does he want to shoot it? I think he's taken four jump shots all year. And, you know, he's going to get drafted high, possibly even lottery, just based off of his physical tools, athleticism, and defensive upside and potential. However, the jump shot is concerning just because he doesn't take them, doesn't take them at all. And I think last year, in, in, I think last year, including AU and high school basketball, to my knowledge, he only took 11 jump shots total. So I would give him the gift of a jump shot and just eliminate his reluctance to shoot. All right, speaking of jump shots, a guy that I feel is settling for too many jump shots is Khalil Ware. He's 9 for 36 on jump shots, and it has definitely impacted his field goal percentage. I think that the, the motor for him was kind of the biggest concern or the consistency in his motor. He does have the physical tools. He is a player that I think is going to be drafted pretty high, even though there are some people who aren't really high on drafting centers in the lottery unless they believe that they're really a difference maker. But I do feel like Ware has fallen too in love with the jump shot. And I would, <laughs> I guess I would gift him more consistency on his jumper, but more, I I, I guess I would kind of change his mindset a little bit to, to try to dominate the paint and, and dominate as a rim runner and finisher around the rim and not settle for too many jump shots. All right, next, one of my favorite players, Terquavion Smith, and I'd have to give him 10 pounds, 10 pounds of, of strength. And even though he's shooting 62% at the rim, which is pretty good, I think those numbers could be even higher if he had a little bit more added strength and could handle a little bit more of the physicality. But Terquavion, and I thought about this earlier this morning, like, Keontae George is considered to be a top 10 pick. And Terquavion, for whatever reasons, is not considered to get the same amount of love as Keontae. And it makes me wonder if Terquavion was highly rated coming out of high school, even though he's, you know, he, he had a lot of buzz coming into this to this season, but he still came out of nowhere. I think he was like barely a top 100 player but if I wonder if he had like this crazy hype from high school coming into his freshman year based off the freshman season that he had would he have been a lottery pick and it seems like now he's he's still young he'll he's only 19 years old and he'll be 20 on draft day it seems like people are still in love with the with the freshman and he is Basically, and a lot of times, a lot of based off what I'm hearing, is a guy that may not even be a lottery pick. So that is just kind of off the, you know, off the path right there. But I'd give him ten pounds. I think with ten pounds, that will definitely add a little bit more on, on to his game. All right, just a few more guys. Julian Phillips, same thing as a lot of guys. A jump shot. He's only shooting twenty percent on jumpers this season. 5 for 19 on unguarded catch and shoot opportunities and he's only shooting 44% at the rim. Despite that, he has shown flashes and the physical tools that NBA teams may cover in the wing. Honestly, before he went on this shooting slump, he was leading Tennessee in scoring and I honestly did not see that. 
I, I thought he'd be a guy that, you know, would average seven, six points per game and this this balanced scoring attack. But I, I didn't think that he would be leading the team of scoring. But, I mean, they're so spread out and balanced. You can have a couple of bad games and you can end up being their fourth leading scorer. You can have a couple of good games and you can end up being the, the leading scorer. But he's averaging about a little around 10 or 11 points per game. If he can get the jump shot falling, if he's a little bit more efficient with the jumper, then he would clearly be their team leading scorer. And I think if he's knocked down a little bit more jump shots, he would be someone that I think would be a lock for the lottery. And I think he's still in the first round range, despite the fact that he's not shooting well from the floor at all. All right, Leonard Miller is someone that I think has really, really, really helped this draft stock this year. And someone that when I saw him at the combine last year, he was like a deer, <laughs> like a, a deer in the headlight. He was just lost. I mean, it was so obvious he was the youngest player there. He just seemed like he had a long ways to go before he was able to just compete on, on the NBA level. He did show some flashes here and there of being a, a good passer. He does have, you know, the size and the physical tools. But this year in the G League, he has been really, really good. I think he's helped his draft stock. The one thing that I will say that he has kind of struggled on is shooting off the catch. Now, shooting off the dribble, he's actually been pretty good, but shooting off the catch, that would be my gift for him. A more efficient jump shot off the catch and playing off the ball. But if he gets that down, then I think he could be one of the biggest risers in the draft. All right, the last player is Gigi Jackson. Gigi Jackson has been good. He just turned 18 years old. He's averaging 16.7 rebounds for South Carolina. He's shooting 36% from three. The efficiency hasn't been an issue. He's just shown a little bit of everything. The one thing that I would gift him for Christmas, if I were able to give guys gifts that will help them improve their draft stock for the rest of the season or even going forward as an NBA prospect, it would be more improved as an isolation score. That was one of the things that I really liked about him was that his size, his ball handling, and his ability to score. And so far this season, he's only three for 26 on isolation situations. So that would be my gift for Gigi. Just more efficiency and a little bit of creativity off the dribble. And I, I do think that in high school, because he was more gifted and bigger and stronger than other guys, he was able to be a, a really good isolation score. I think he's struggling a little bit in college because the guys are a little older and, and, and you know, just his size or even bigger. But I still believe that he is going to be a very impactful isolation score in the NBA. So that would be my gift for him to just keep improving. But again, he just turned 18 years old. He should be in like college algebra or he should be just going on Christmas break right now before preparing for a high school holiday tournament well that wraps up this episode big shout out to each and every person that has made this locked on nba big board podcast your first listen of the day now you got to check out the locked on sports today podcast because it covers the biggest stories of the day plus the instant reactions big game recaps and the take of the day it's available in the odyssey app youtube or wherever you get your podcast once again i hope everybody has a merry merry christmas and happy holidays i am signing out peace